Even when there's a chip shortage and supply and demand problem going on right now, jacking up the prices of PC parts sky high, you still went ahead and bought yourself a brand new PC. <laughs> to be honest, good for you. So, game time na ba? Well, there are a few things now you can first do to maximize and get the most out of your PC. This could also improve your PC's lifespan so you can enjoy it for much longer. I'm Rocky the Programmer and in this video, we're going to be talking about the 5 things you should first do to your brand new PC. Ang video na to ay handog ni cdkoffers.com. Marami kang mahahanap na iba't ibang uri ng software dito. May games, apps, activation codes for Windows 10. Check out our video on CDK Offers in the video description. Mabilis, mura, and syempre legit dito. Madali lang mag-order, search for the software you need, add to cart, check out, daan ka sa payment options nila, wala pa isang minuto, finished. May legit working CDK ka na sa software na pinili mo. Gamitin ang aming promo code para makakuha pa ng extra 20% discount sa purchase mo. Kung naghanap ka ng mura, legit, and original software, check out cdkoffers.com. So for context lang, this guide is for when you've built your PC and every component works na. And you can safely boot to Windows already. Although this video is generally for brand new PCs, you can still use some of the tips here for your existing or even laptops. So tip number one, create a comprehensive list of all the parts inside your PC. I know you're itching to game na and the last thing na you want to do is to create a spreadsheet of your computer parts like some kind of accountant. But doing so may save you a lot of trouble down the line. List all the parts and the names ng parts, yung brand, yung exact na model niya, yung mga notable na specs like let's say may compatibilities. And also, important din na ilagay mo yung date of purchase and also saan mo siya na-purchase so that you can check yung validity ng warranties mo. Sakali lang na may magkaroon ng problema. Listing it this way would also mean na alam mo kung ano yung nasa loob ng PC mo and mas madali na siyang i-troubleshoot later. Or if hindi ka naman magta-troubleshoot, it would save a lot of guesswork for the tech guys na tatanong mo para dun sa problema ng PC mo. Speaking of tech guys, make sure to check out yung ating official forum down below. <laughs> Tip number two, update your motherboard BIOS. Medyo mahirap but this is a very important step. Yung firmware or yung motherboard BIOS, yun yung logical code that resides inside your motherboard. That's in charge of yung pag-route ng data to the CPU, yung pag-supply ng power sa mga lahat ng components, kung anong speed yung iaalaw niya na patakbuhin yung RAM mo, and marami pang ibang sobrang importante. Ngayon, obviously, yung mga manufacturer, hindi naman sila makakagawa ng code na perfecto agad in one go. Kaya nag exist yung mga updates, yung mga patches na kailangan talaga nating i-download. Keeping your BIOS updated will ensure na solid yung performance mo lagi and mas stable siya. That would also fix yung mga compatibility issues na nag-a-arise kapag may mga bagong components na lumalabas. And most importantly, yung ding security. We'll go back to that later. The process is a bit involved, although hindi naman to guide, parang general na rin na kung ano yung i-expect mo. Kailangan mong pumunta dun sa motherboard manufacturer website and you're going to look for a bio section tapos may file ka doon na ida-download titignan mo yung date kung yun ba yung pinaka-updated and isustore mo yung file na yun sa isang thumb drive then sasaksak mo yung thumb drive doon sa motherboard uh, USB port and when you go to the BIOS using yung delete key as your PC boots up makikita mo doon depende talaga sa brand eh. it's either Update firmware, or easy flash, or flash BIOS, or update BIOS, or and so forth. Pero yung tool na yun, kadalasan, automatic na siya once na madetect niya na yung firmware file. And laging isang warning lang na may malaking-malaking chance of breaking or rendering your motherboard useless kapag na-interrupt ng whatsoever yung firmware installation. So either make sure na meron kang UPS, that's the best way to do it, or make sure mo lang na hindi umuulan, kumikidlat, para walang power interruptions habang nag-update ka ng firmware. Tip number three, 
update your software. So, tungkol na naman to sa pag-update, pero nandun ka na sa loob ng OS ngayon. So, you're going to update lahat ng pwedeng i-update. Pinaka-obvious dito would be the GPU drivers, yung chipset drivers, and yung mga drivers ng mga components mo like yung Wi-Fi card, kung meron ka, mga LAN card, and yung mga, let's say, meron kang RGB controllers, kailangan up-to-date din sila. So, tulad sa GPU, kapag nag-update ka ng drivers nun, kadalasan, meron talagang significant na performance improvement. Especially kapag ka may mga bagong AAA games na lumalabas. Kadalasan, may kasabay din yan na um, NVIDIA or AMD na nakalagay game-ready card. So, napapatch yung mga performance issues ng games na yun. And, Overall, mas nagiging solid yung performance ng GPU mo. That also goes the same for yung chipset drivers ng motherboard mo. This is very important kasi yun yung link ng OS to the BIOS. So, dapat um, updated din yung chipset drivers na yun. Itong mga software updates na to, makikita mo to dun sa website ng manufacturer mo. So, tulad nung kumawa, GPU, nasa NVIDIA siya or AMD. And yung chipset drivers, tulad nung sa BIOS, nandun din siya sa manufacturer's website ng motherboard mo. And probably the most important thing, keep your OS up to date. Ngayon, parang meme na yung Windows updates na bigla na lang may surprise restart habang gumagawa ka ng thesis mo. Bigla siya magda-download ng 3GB na update habang meron kang uh, rank na match. Pero it's, this is very important kasi yung mga Windows updates, although <laughs> parang nakakainis talaga yung update process, they address yung mga stability issues, yung mga weird na mga components na bigla na lang maghahang or bigla na lang nakokorap yung um, OS mo, for example. Kadalasan, yung mga Windows updates, yung nakakasold ng problems na yun. Most importantly then is yung mga vulnerabilities and mga exploits na kailangan ma-patch. We live in a digital age where kadalasan yung mga finances natin like yung mga bank accounts, yung mga or kung meron kang cryptocurrencies nakatay yun dun sa PC mo or sa digital identity mo. Hackers are working day and night para ma-access yun and para makuha yung information mo. And yes, we mean you, yung nanonood ngayon. We're going to show you an image of yung current na attacks right at this moment dun sa Hardware Sugar website. Sobrang dami, di ba? Kasi no one is exempted. So keep your OS up to date, keep your antivirus software up to date, and lahat ng components po, dapat up-to-date siya. So, nakakatamad man or nakakahassle kasi ang dami-dami website na kailangan puntahan. Pero, in reality, updates are good and patches. Mas nakaka-improve talaga sila ng performance down the line. Tip number four is benchmark. I know most of you isn't like me na parang sobrang obsessed na dun sa performance scores ng aking rig. But hear me out. Benchmarking your PC fresh out of the box will give you a basic idea of the uh, fresh and yung normal na operation ng PC mo. So you'd know kung ano yung FPS na you can expect while playing a game, ano yung temperatures na i-reach mo while 100% load halimbawa yung rig mo, and so on. Ngayon, sa benchmarking, you can use a combination of tools like TimeSpy, libre lang yun sa Steam for CPU and GPU performance, Cinebench for multi-threaded CPU performance, and then, HW monitor para man monitor mo yung temps. Ngayon, ang gagawin mo, once na maset up mo na yung brand new PC mo, you're going to benchmark using yung tools na yun, and then you're going to save and record yung mga figures and scores na makukuha mo. That way, you know kung ano yung parang pinaka-baseline na performance na you should expect from your PC. Tapos, with down the line, mga siguro 3 months after, Run those tests again and see if there's drastic na change. Like for example, like plus 10 degrees big lasha na hotter. So that means na there's something wrong with your cooling, for example. Or alimbawa, um, do sa time spy big lang bumaba yung GPU score mo. So that would mean either um, nago overheat yung GPU mo or there's siguro error sa drivers niya. So you can troubleshoot it. Yung ibang games then meron silang mga built-in na benchmark tools like yung Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, CSGO and you, uh, actually kahit yung Valorant meron din. So you can use also those and record yung average na FPS mo. So that siguro 3 months or 6 months later you can test it again and see if meron bang nangyari dun sa PC mo. So tip number 5, medyo controversial pero 
consider overclocking your PC or siguro kahit yung RAM lang. Now, this comes down to personal preference and optional din talaga siya. And we do know yung great risk that comes with overclocking in general. Pero we've also come a long way na. Yung mga components ngayon, they're more or less designed to withstand heat and more voltage kasi they're expected to be overclocked. And part na yun ngayon ng PC ownership talaga. Gone are the days of frying your CPU dahil meron kang maling nalagay na voltage or biglang mag-overheat yung GPU mo dahil ang dami mong clock na nabigay sa kanya. Kadalasan, meron na silang mga fail-safes sa loob. Actually, meron na nga rin yung mga tools na, pin na ginawa para mas mapadali yung pag-overclock natin like yung Ryzen Master for Ryzen CPUs. And sometimes, kahit yung mismong component, meron siyang mga either one-click na OC button because they're expected talaga to be overclocked. And ayun nga, components are designed talaga to be overclocked and you should take advantage of that. Now, I understand if you're still iffy about it. Pero, at the very least, overclock your RAM. Kasi yung advertised na speeds ng RAM, makukuha mo lang siya by overclocking or yung pag-enable ng XMP. It's very simple lang naman. Just go to the BIOS and then um, enable yung XMP from there. Dito sa Hardware Sugar, ginagawa na namin yun by default. But you can also do it yourself. Ngayon, tulad ng RAM, yung mga ibang monitors din na nagsasabi na 165Hz yung kanilang refresh rates. Again, that's only reachable through overclocking the monitor refresh rate. So, you have to do that. And this is very addicting and it's, it's, it's really fun if you really want to do it. Pero if you want to go down this spiral, you have to do your homework. Research everything about your components, kung paano sila i-overclock safely, and ano yung mga mitigation steps para hindi na masira yung components mo if you do decide to overclock it. Sinasadya talaga namin ngayon na hindi magbigay ng guide para mag-overclock kasi ayaw naman namin maging liable kami dun sa pwedeng masira sa components nyo. But if you really want to do this, you can check out yung maraming marami ng guides about overclocking your specific component. And also remember, you're actually paying for the privilege of overclocking your components. Kasama siya dun sa research and development and yung overall na design ng components na yun kasi they have overclocking in mind. So if you did all those steps, you're ready to basically game na and or do whatever you want with the PC and you can enjoy it to the fullest kasi mamamaximize mo na yung kanya full potential. So we hope now you found these tips helpful. If you like it, leave a like and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, you can visit our physical shop in Makati, Harvey Sugar. Uh, and also, check out yung aming forum na pm.hwsugar.ph. Thank you and see you next video. Okay, so, binili ko itong 3080 na GT GeForce RTX. Pwede kasi naman yun sa Minecraft na kung bawang yun yung gusto ko kasi na 700 FPS. Papa, papa, papa. Tapos gusto ko silang ipag SLI ng 6700 XT. Pwede okay. kasi sila dun sa, kasi ITX lang yung build ko eh. Okay, okay. Tapos bumili din ako ng crucial na balisik gaming memory na 4733 MHz. Eh kasi okay. yung ano ko, ITX na X570. Maka-overclock ko ba yun na X570 na 4070? Okay, okay, okay. 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 Tapos gusto ko rin bumili ng 3090 para sa pinsa ko kong strap converter. Okay. Kasi pag gusto ko siyang gawin ano, uh, pwede siyang magigod sa server siya ng bahay. Okay, okay. Okay. Tapos yung... Case ko kasi kulay puti yun, pero yung PS yung kukulay black. Hindi ba ako judge ni Anton doon? Opo. Opo. Thank you. Thanks for watching internet and special thanks to our top fans. Christian Espinosa, John Ruben Ocha, ITX Addict, Ian Meru, Richard Ongkinko, Leah Magnaye, and Dom H. Maraming maraming salamat po.